In this video, we will look at what is inside the Viet Cong tunnels and how and why they played a big part in the fight of Viet Cong soldiers and North Vietnamese troops against the American soldiers. In the 1960s, as the U.S. forces increased in Vietnam, the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong troops further expanded the tunnels they had started during their fight against the French in the 1940s. The Viet Cong dug the tunnels by hand or with simple tools during the rainy season because the ground was soft. They were also unable to fight face to face because of the more powerful equipment of the American soldiers. So, the Viet Cong thought to covertly fight the Americans using tunnels, the Kuchi tunnels, and iron triangle tunnels that reach up to 250 kilometers from the outskirts of Saigon to the border of Cambodia. Now, how strong are the tunnels? The B-52 bombers bombed it with 30-ton loads of high explosives but did not penetrate due to the strength of the tunnels. Why? This is because of the composition of the soil in the area. The old alluvium lateritic soils that are rich in iron oxides mixed with mud that when dry is as hard as cement. This is one of the reasons why such tunnels are so strong even without supports used. The tunnel's depth ranges from 1.5 meters to 20 meters. In fact, the tunnels are called an underground city because of the number of different sections or parts of it that have different functions. Let's start with the entrances of the tunnels. The entrances of the tunnels have boards placed to cover them. It is coated with wax and sponge rubber to make it feel like the ground when stepped on by an enemy. These entrances are in high places for good ventilation, to prevent flood ingress, and to prevent fire and chemical warfare. And there are different entrances made in different places to make it easier to escape if the enemy sees some of the entrances. The entrances are also often hidden in pig pens that are not frequented by enemies. It was especially effective on dogs used by American soldiers because the smell of the pig feces masked the smell of humans underneath. Sometimes, the entrance to the tunnel is inside a house where the enemy doesn't usually go. These entrances are also used by the Viet Cong to ambush American soldiers. Their tactic is that one Viet Cong shows as a bait and immediately runs towards the entrance and suddenly disappears. When the Americans chase the bait, some Viet Congs are already waiting, positioned in the tunnel called Spider Hole. There are also entrances and exits that can be found in the rivers that only the Viet Cong know about. Let's look at the size of the tunnels. The Viet Congs only fit here. It is 0.6 meters to 1.2 meters wide and 0.8 meters to 1.6 meters high. A regular sized American soldier wouldn't fit here. We can also see that the tunnels are not dug straight but zigzag from 60 to 120 degrees. This was done intentionally in order to deflect the explosion of explosives such as hand grenades. It is also effective against any gun because the bullets will hit the curved part of the tunnel instead of the target. Talking about defense, using poison gas doesn't work either because the tunnel has many trap doors to block the gas from entering other parts of the tunnels. The airflow at the bottom is also slow so the toxic gas does not spread immediately. Other tunnels also have water like this so no toxic gas can get through to the other side of the tunnel. During the night, the Viet Congs come out in order to get food, feed their farm animals, and do the usual tasks they used to do during the day. When the sun is still up, the Viet Congs operate against the American soldiers. They are able to do this because they have the following. First is the kitchen like this. 
They can cook without the enemy noticing because there are many smoke vents and they are hidden in thick grasses. The water that they drink and use for cooking is taken from the well that they dug underneath. It is safe water because it is not within the reach of the chemicals that the American soldiers sprayed on the surface. They have this weapons factory where they make landmines that they also made from unexploded explosives from American soldiers. This is also where their guns and ammunition are stored. We can also see here that they have light. That's because of this bicycle generator that generates enough electricity to power a light or simple electronic device. This bicycle generator was also used in a cinema where Viet Cong soldiers watch shows to boost their fighting spirit. Such a generator is also used by the Viet Congs in a hospital like this. This hospital is surrounded by a parachute so that the wound of the injured Viet Congs would not become infected due to the falling grains of soil. On the second level, there's also a mini infirmary. Here, the Viet Congs who are not seriously injured rest because there are medicines here and this place also has good ventilation so they can breathe properly. The Viet Cong sleep on the second or third level. They use hammocks made from American soldiers' parachutes. Their sleeping place is purposely placed at this level to make it difficult for the American soldiers called tunnel rats to reach. We will talk about tunnel rats in another video. This is the grave of the Viet Congs. They purposely placed the casualties here so that the American soldiers could not estimate how many were killed and how many were the remaining Viet Cong forces. Now, these facilities were not the only ones that the Viet Congs built. Of course, they also created booby traps in the tunnels. First is this punji pit which is located just on the surface. Often, it is also close to entrances or spider holes. Anyone who falls into it will surely be in danger because of the depth of the hole and the number of punji sticks placed. When the enemy is able to enter the entrance, various things are waiting in the tunnel. These scorpions are one of them. The scorpions are hidden in a hole covered with a board with a trip wire. When the enemy touches the trip wire, the scorpions will come out immediately after the trap is opened. Then it's over. Even if the enemy gets through, it is still not safe because just ahead is a hidden niche. This is a place in the tunnel around the curve where a Viet Cong soldier can hide. It is covered with only a thin layer of dry mud. The Viet Cong can see the approaching American soldier because it has a small hole. When the enemy approaches, the Viet Cong will immediately stab the American soldier. When the enemy insists on squeezing through a narrow manhole like this, a Viet Cong awaits on the other side with a garrote. In one part of the tunnel, a green pit viper is placed on a wooden stick or bamboo above. If they don't notice it, it will probably bite them. This snake also serves as a warning because when the enemy shoots it, the Viet Cong will immediately be alerted. In another part of the tunnel, the enemy who passes through this will have a worse fate because at the top of this tunnel, a Viet Cong is waiting to drop a grenade. Then, the top will be covered with a board and with a bag of sand to prevent the fire of the explosion from escaping to the Viet Cong's position. Let's go back to this water. This has different designs. Sometimes when you dive into it, you still can come out to the other side with no problem. Important items of the Viet Congs are often placed here. But sometimes, there's no exit, so the enemy who dives will surely die because he will run out of air. This is the Rolling Punji Spike. It is located right in the tunnel passage. When the enemy sneaks through it, he will surely lose his limbs, or worse, die. And this is the grenade trap. It no longer has a safety pin and delay element, so when its trigger wire is hit or touched, it will explode immediately. Now, is life really good under the tunnels? No. It was very difficult, but the Viet Cong soldiers had no choice. 
First of all, the Viet Cong had very little supply of water, food, and air. Not only that, the Viet Cong also lived together among various insects and animals such as ants, spiders, scorpions, poisonous centipedes, and rats. The living conditions inside the tunnel caused the death of many Viet Cong soldiers. Most died of malaria, and almost all of them had many worms in their intestines. It is said that up to 45,000 Viet Cong soldiers died just digging the Kuchi and Iron Triangle tunnels. Nevertheless, the Kuchi and Iron Triangle tunnels played a huge part in the resistance of the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong troops against the American soldiers even though they were at a disadvantage because the American soldiers had more resources. The tunnels prolonged the war and increased the number of casualties among American soldiers, causing the Americans to withdraw completely in 1973. You can also watch this video about the Vietnam War booby traps.